Hello folks, Paul here, UK Rails and more. I've just thought to uh, bring you back for a little bit of an update on this uh, bridge project, the viaduct project that crosses the uh, the river. Uh, basically, uh, what I've decided, I've just been trying out with cardboard really, just trying different methods and seeing what's going to look uh, reasonably realistic. Um, but what I've come up with really is that this side here, there's going to be road past the shops or buildings uh, houses whatever uh, and there's going to be a road there and you're going to have a brick or stone arched uh, bridge there as part of the viaduct and then there's going to be another one there on the left um, you'll see that behind there is the actual physical structure of the viaduct itself which obviously wasn't built kind of cosmetically uh, but that's what physically is going to hold up the top um, so what I decided for that bit is I'm going to have a second arch there but that arch is going to be um, bricked up inside. So the main viaduct is probably going to be stone and then it's going to be bricked up inside partially. And then there'll be some kind of building at the bottom there. I'm not sure what it's going to be, but some kind of light industry or possibly a shop, maybe an antiques dealers uh, or a small, small tire warehouse or, or anything. I'm not quite sure yet, but that's going to be uh, utilised behind the archway. And I thought that really solves the problem because you can have the uh, you can have that closed or you can have a glass front to it uh, or shutters or anything and that's going to basically disguise the fact that I've got the physical structure behind it there uh, and then basically I'm going to have uh, a girder type or steel type structure there just a straight one going across and there'll be some kind of support in the middle that's going to be uh, a stone heavy stone base possibly rounded girders uh, coming up to provide some additional support and then next to it on that side there's going to be another girder one which is probably going to be equal lengths to the other girder type structure. Um, on the last video I did you'll see that some of the uh, bridges around Chinley uh, if you have a look at those there's some that I'll take some inspiration from that type of uh, girder type structure which should be quite straightforward to uh, build and also the other bonus with that is because it's going to have railings at the top rather than a brick or stone type wall it will show the, uh, the the trains going across the top quite well uh, over to the left here there's going to be uh, similar to this really where you've got the arches but I'm going to probably try and make them match the arches more in terms of dimensions on the other side so there'll be some adjustment there but this is just the um, the initial look at it basically to see if it if it looks right um, some of the things that I've noticed just from looking at some of the real things some of the ones in Chinley on that last video um, is that sometimes you you have the actual um, the legs in the middle uh, they tend to be quite narrow really uh, on most of them and I, I would imagine it's because the engineers work out uh, kind of strength work versus the uh, building materials uh, so they're not going to use more building materials than necessary um, for the uh, for the type of trains and weight that requirements of it but what you do tend to get is where you get the uh, the end where it joins a different type of bridge structure you tend to get a lot more um, brick and uh, stone work there probably to, to kind of carry the extra strength and extra support needed for the span of the uh, where it crosses the river uh, this one was just a bit of an experiment so I was thinking with that one um, possibly even having one of the type like a bit like the Runc Runcorn Bridge where you get a an arch over the top and that kind of thing but realistically I thought for the kind of span that's required here you probably wouldn't get that that's probably something for bigger type spanned bridges uh, so I'm gonna have a similar thing to this uh, that in the river and then possibly a couple of supports a bit like the um, scenic inspiration video the the uh, the river crossing one uh, that I've got where I looked at that particular bridge on the River Mersey uh, which this is kind of fairly loosely based on um, so just looking at the actual bridge itself or the, the viaduct arches for here uh, basically it's going to be a bit like this kind of structure if I can just film that which isn't so easy with uh, one hand basically uh, but yeah it's probably going to come down to about there um, 
so there'll be the road will actually go under that one and then this is the one that will be bricked up it'll be part bricked up and then possibly shutters and that kind of thing okay so for making the uh, the actual arches uh, basically it's just a case of uh, you want the curved top and basically I've used this old painting uh, basically that worked out a decent kind of span so it was just a case of uh, of drawing around it basically uh, stenciling around it uh, and then just cutting cutting it out uh, on these ones it's going to be a particular type where they actually come back out on themselves again uh, and that's the kind of design that you'd get for if it's quite a kind of a silty uh, base where they want to just increase the footprint area uh, on the other side it's probably going to be the straight down type but I thought looking at the different videos that I've got the inspiration I've got I thought that looked quite a realistic um, kind of span uh, and actual you know leg width on it so uh, it was just a case of cutting those out and then on the top it was just a case of scoring underneath there again as I've done on some of the other videos which then utilised the natural fold at the top of there with another one just to give it a bit of depth and obviously underneath there there's going to be uh, there's going to be brick or uh, stonework underneath it as well on that one so yeah I'll uh, try and put those in situ and then I'm going to take them away do the extra detailing uh, I'll show you uh, some of the actual outside detailing I'm going to do I'm going to make my own I was thinking about whether to use plastic card or whether to use paper and I thought no let's just try and scratch build it completely uh, using different materials and then just see if we can get a good effect with that first of all uh, if it doesn't work out too well, then I've always got the option of uh, of trying some more conventional methods as well. So yeah, I hope you find that interesting and I will uh, bring you back in a bit. Bye for now. Okay, folks, so uh, basically with this, what I need to do is start giving it some depth. So obviously we've got the, the depth on the top there. Uh, I've cut some other pieces which will fit in between there and that's going to give it a bit of depth uh, and then what I wanted to do with this bit is uh, remember this one on the left is going to be the one that's going to be bricked up on the uh, outer that's going to be stone so it's going to be another card covering on that and then uh, there's a new sort of technique I've tried uh, to actually make the uh, the stonework look effective uh, and I'll show you that shortly uh, but in the meantime so that's going to be a lighter colour on the outside because it's going to be stone. Uh, on the inside where it's bricked up, it's probably going to be bricked up to about, around about there, if you can see that. Uh, and the idea is, if you can see, but that's going to be set back a bit and it should give a bit of natural shadow as well, like that when it's on there, depending on which uh, angle we're looking at. And that's going to give it some real depth. And then I thought, using this kind of material, I don't know if you can see there, but it's almost lined up, ready for sort of a, a kind of a large sort of brick structure. Uh, so I thought in some way I'm going to try and bring that out and utilise that. So that should contrast nicely with the lighter coloured uh, stonework on the outside. And then it'll just be a case of building some kind of structure there for uh, the actual shutters of the, uh, the premises or the front of that premises that's going to be tucked away there. So yeah, I'll carry on and bring you back in a bit. Bye for now. Okay, folks, so it's just a case of uh, next, just building up the uh, the layers, really. Uh, just of cardboard at the back here, just to give it some strength. Uh, basically, I've used the Gorilla Glue there. It's probably overkill for that. That's really wood glue. Um, and you could probably just use some of the, the PVA as well, which I've got there, just weighting it down. Uh, but basically, building up the layers uh, equally on both sides. And then I'm going to use that central piece there, which is going to form part of the brickwork uh, for inside the, the span. Uh, and that's going to be placed on that uh, there, but obviously the right kind of depth in between so that it just sort of builds up a bit of profile. So I'll get that glued on and uh, bring you back in a bit. Bye for now. OK, folks, welcome back. Uh, so here's just this little scene, really, in the, uh, the basic effects I'm looking for. Uh, so basically I've got the arches there with the road going under it and then on the left if we just move these houses away you can 
can see the the lows previously but effectively you've got some natural shadow there so the outside of this lot's all going to be uh, a different type of material and then the inside that's going to be the bricked up top bit and then there's going to be some kind of uh, I don't know yet shutters or something below there or maybe some little shop with a, a glass front maybe or something like that I'm not quite sure yet and then those buildings are going to come back to it there uh, again the top train really it's going to be uh, where the about that level is going to be visible from the top or looking up at it like that uh, and then again just through folding that over carefully we've got some depth there to it as well so there's a lot more to do with this bit what it means now is I can take it away just see that shadow so it's actually set back uh, I can take it away and then I can do a lot of additional detailing with it and uh, make that try and make that as realistic as I can. So yeah, I'll speak to you in a bit. Bye for now. Okay folks, so uh, next stage it was just doing the, the inner, uh, which is just some of that uh, cardboard that's been folded over on itself, which it does quite naturally because of the the weave or whatever, whatever, however you describe it. Uh, basically it's face down there and that was quite a tricky bit just gluing it in position I had to basically put the glue around the edge of it and then just hold it in position but fortunately this stuff sets quite quickly and there's the back of the uh the other one as well it's going to be the small light industry building or shop etc so yeah once that's done that should uh i'm going to do that quite dark underneath so that we've uh, got quite a bit of shadow and that should make it look quite natural as well i'll bring you back in a bit Bye for now. Okay, another quick job was to uh, just the uh, foundations really, or, or the retaining walls I should say. Uh, so basically it's another few pieces of cardboard I've just used three there. And it's just gonna be a case of gluing those together. So we've got a, another solid structure and that's gonna be the, uh, the retaining wall on the actual embankment side. Hello folks, uh, welcome back, uh, following day and everything's had a chance to dry up, uh, so let's just have a look. So that's the uh, basically the first stage of it and I've lined the inside there as well, and how well you can see that in this light. Um, so yeah, quite pleased with that and then the back is just reinforced in the various places and there's the, uh, the lining. Uh, so first of all, uh, I'm going to do this, uh, this module. Uh, facing very much from the so that you're viewing it from one angle so I'm not going to worry too much about the other side of it for now that can just stay because it, it won't be viewed there but the intention is eventually I'll do the same kind of thing so we've got the option of viewing it from the other side uh, as well uh, I've also been working on a few little techniques for for the stonework for this as well so uh, you'll see more of an update on that in the next video but I was quite reasonably okay with this one uh, and it's really simple, it's just I've done that with uh, a pencil, uh, pressing on quite hard really just to mark out the mortar areas uh, and then just going over it with some uh, soot, just a bit of uh, ash, charcoal, soot uh, with a little bit of a, a damp um, piece of kitchen roll just to smear it in uh, and I think that works quite good if you're kind of making stone work and again it's just, I mean that's a tissue box and <clears throat> You can get different colours and I want to try and just use as many natural materials as I can really that uh, for this just a bit of a project. Uh, so other things to do uh, or the next steps which I'll put on another video uh, which I'll be doing shortly is um, obviously I want to clad this now in this grey material and see if we can uh, get that kind of effect on it and see, see how that looks um, because I wanted this one to Predominantly, I'm going to leave this as brick on the inside, uh, just as a bit of contrast. Uh, and then I want this kind of stonework. So for this module, because it's going to be kind of more, sort of slightly more suburban, rural, I'm going to use more uh, stone, stone buildings and things like that. Then when I come to the uh, module for the city town section, that's going to be uh, that's going to be brick. That's going to be heavily brick with a lot of these viaducts. In fact, one of them, the uh, I'm going to have a, 
a number of viaducts, a bit like you'll see in Manchester, where you'll have lots of different industries, similar to what I'm gonna try and use here. So yeah, hope you found that interesting. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, then I'd be really grateful if you could uh, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're interested. Uh, but if not, uh, no worries. Thanks very much for watching. And I will speak to you very soon. Bye for now.